Hello and welcome to another Factorio base tour. I'm Exterminator and thank you so much for joining me again. And uh, this is one I am very, very excited about. I enjoy all these base tours. They're all fantastic. This one though, I I had heard praises from before I even looked at it. So <laughs> that's always a good sign. Uh, this is a base uh, from Lily Rose. And this, this is truly just crazy it is such an amazing base in so many ways uh, it is one of the biggest bases in many regards I've uh, reviewed uh, so where do we start uh, first off uh, I would like to thank Lily for submitting it uh, because this I love I, I love doing base tours and I always like seeing unique bases huge bases and this is both I would say and uh, like I said it received uh, Timbo who is a member, a frequent member of Neil Outs' streams and my streams, um, and has helped me with my Twitch API stuff. He uh, already was giving this praises, like he, he knew that Lily submitted it to me, and he's like, "Just I'm excited for you to look at the base because it's awesome, and I can see why." So why don't we just start off by looking at the map, and this should give you an idea of what we're looking at. So there we go. When I, uh, Lily wrote up a very nice, uh, document on, you know, giving some stats for the base, the progress of the base, and when I was reading it and seeing the pictures, and then especially once I got on the map here, my head kind of exploded, um, so this is almost like those Russian nesting dolls, where this is octagons inside octagons inside octagons, uh, with just, it's just ridiculous how... <laughs> how much work and thought went into building this base and to make it look nice in a very particular way. Uh, so as we can see, we have, well, really, actually, we need to zoom out to this level to get the idea. So even the rails are in octagon form. So this is this is how crazy this is. So um, crazy in a good way. Um, the rails here on the far outside are obviously an octagon. And then we come in a step further, and this, the concreted area, is an octagon. Inside that, we have an octagon built with octagons, and all the rails within this, all the main rails within this, are also octagons. And uh, then even coming into here, uh, I mean, this is kind of an octagon-ish, like how the belts and stuff work. Um, but uh, there's a lot to look at in this base. So this is built, <clears throat> excuse me, very far out from spawn. So if we come over to here, uh, we have a ridiculous, massive solar. This is one of the biggest solar fields I have ever seen, uh, and for good reason. If we take a look at a power pole, this base consumes right now, it, well, when it's charging accumulators, it's consuming over 100 gigawatts, guys. This is 100 gigawatts. Um, it, when it's not charging accumulators, uh, I was looking at is around 45 to 50 gigawatts, which is still crazy. Um, and this is all with solar panels and accumulators. There's no nuclear, there's no like infinite power generators. This, th there's two, over 2 million solar panels on this map, nearly 2 million accumulators. Uh, and all this power is because, well, there's over 70,000 beacons, over 3,000 assemblers, almost 6,000 furnaces. So this is, accumulators are charged. You can see this is kind of just the average um, draw here, about 50 gigawatts. Uh, 16,000 row ports, 11,000 radars, which seems slightly excessive. A lot of these are probably in the solar field, though. Uh, just tons of stuff. Now, in terms of mods, I should mention this is using a couple mods that are pretty small, um, nothing major. Uh, it was using actual craft time, which is just like a thing to see how fast things are being made and stuff. So there's that pump anywhere, which basically allows you to just put a pump down anywhere. Uh, and Lily explained that the reason for that was that the refineries were already built, like th that there was no water near them is my understanding. So it was just easier to do this. That's honestly, I don't consider that like that cheaty. Like, I don't think securing water for your oil is really that huge of a part of the game like you know it's, it's not like the oil is being infinitely generated just the water that it can just be pumped from anywhere um and then electric locomotives and uh the reason for this uh they say uh, Lily says 
Electric trains were used to smooth the base. The infrastructure would support the fuel production needed for normal trains. I'm not sure if that's supposed to say wouldn't, um, but uh, the electric ones save some UPS and make the base run more smoothly, so that's fine. Uh, you know, it's just a different type of train. I mean, there is a cost to it. I mean, the the a lot of the power is also, you know, from the electric trains because there's electric providers, uh, basically, is how this works. Uh, and then, of course, the electric trains, um, you know, get charged and all that stuff. So... Uh, if we look, if we, uh, we're in a Spider-Tron here, if we look, you know, these are electric locomotives. Um, the cargo wagons are the same. Locomotives, just instead of running on fuel, they are electrically charged. Um, so there's a cost, a power cost for this. Um, and, of course, costs went into building the solar and stuff. Um, and then this also runs on uh, HTN, which I believe is uh, Hoffless's train network. Uh I apologize. I know, obviously, who Hoffelos is. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing their name correctly, though. I always mispronounce their name, I think. Um, but, uh, yeah, so this is... They're, they're not using a train, like, network managing mod. Uh, it's just a, a bunch of combinator stuff, which I do not... I'm gonna, not going to even attempt to understand it. I think Lily even maybe had a little difficulty figuring it out because uh, in their notes say that uh, Timbo helped a lot with... Uh, the intersections and then Hopolis themselves helped a lot for learning and fixing HTN. Um, and then Fire Razor also helped with moral support and fixing HTN in some places. So this is beyond my understanding. Uh, all these combinators, as we know, I'm not good with networks, but it's like a vanilla train manager, basically. And then these stations uh, do also have, are utilizing the train limit. Uh, to, to help with all that. So let's actually start and take a look at the base. So what are the goals of this base? Uh, and what's our production look like? Uh, so the goals uh, was, it, it was basically intended to be beautiful, unique in design and aesthetically pleasing, which I think was absolutely achieved. Uh, you know, to note, this isn't necessarily meant to be the most efficient base ever. Um, so just keep that in mind while we're looking at it. The planned infrastructure uh, was planned to be able to support 4K science per minute average production. However, due to train loadings and some difficulties, it may lower a bit by the time the production science can catch up. And we'll kind of see that. Like, some of these sciences are certainly, in fact, they're doing even more than 4K a minute, but then some, like, aren't. Um, if we average it all out, it's fairly close to 4K a minute. Um, I mean, they're certainly cranking out science. If we look at our all-time production, uh, you know, 2 billion iron... Oh, almost 2 billion copper, I mean, honestly, fairly close to a billion circuits, which is insane, 170 million green circuits, uh, I mean, just, you know, 180 million steel, 23 million blue circuits, so they've basically got the uh, green circuit, the achievement, the circuit achievement, but with blue circuits, you know, they make 20 million green circuits, well, they've done that with blue circuits, and then obviously many, many times over with greens. Um, so we look at science, so there's been... Uh, 14 on most of these, 15 on these two, um, million science produced throughout the lifetime of this map, which is a lot. I mean, that is, that's a ton. And speaking of the lifetime of this map, this map has nearly a thousand hours on it, guys. If we take a look here, 997 hours and 33 minutes. And if Lily uh, is continuing to play on this currently, uh, they submitted this about a month ago, and I'm now getting around to it due to there being like a queue beforehand of other people who are ahead. But um, if they're continuing to play this, then, you know, over a thousand, thousand hours at this point, I'd imagine, uh, which is just crazy. The most time I've ever spent on a map is about 450 hours on my sitting support space map, uh, which is like not even half of this. <laughs> so <laughs> that's pretty ridiculous. Uh, and then uh, back to the goals. So... Uh, basically, they mentioned that there's two main places they're not happy with, the rails and steel furnace production and green circuits. Uh, they underestimated the input-output needed in these places and had to rework the block, which uh, ended up being less attractive, in my opinion. So we'll take a look at those, but let's look at this. So I know you guys are probably chomping at the bay. Sturm, take a look at the builds. I want to see this. Well, we had to go over the stats and stuff. So we have this rail network running along the outside and these ore patches. Now, these are not spawned in. Uh, the reason that these are so... Uh, rich is because they came out this far. So this over here somewhere was the spawn, I'd imagine. And then uh, at some point down the line, uh, they built a little bot base, like 
to be like a make everything and very small amount of science. And then after that, they decided to move out to this area and build a 300 science per minute, um, quote unquote, starter base, um, essentially to do more science in the background. Uh, I don't see that base here anymore. So I would assume it was just torn up in the process of building this base unless I'm blind, which is possible. Um, so this is very far away from spawn. As we know, the farther from spawn you get, the richer resources are. So we have outposts here uh, scattered along this outer rail network. As you can see, I mean, these are well over a billion, multiple billions. Throw in the fact that this map is at a whopping 113, basically, mining productivity. This is insane, guys. This <laughs> One of these researches alone this one alone is nearly 300,000 science, just the, this one. And all uh, productivity, they give 10% each. If you played a long, long, if you played quite a long time ago in the game, if you've been playing for a long time like me, there was a time when each one only gave 2%, I believe. And then the devs changed it to be 10%. So sometimes I have to remember or, or reorient myself and remind myself that it's now 10% per. So this is providing 1120% mining productivity. That means that, not that it matter, I mean, billions of resources <laughs> are gonna last basically forever anyway, but this is essentially uh, 10 times this amount that it can produce. This is about 30 billion resources that can be pumped out of here because it's the 3 billion times 1120. Um, but the reason mining productivity needed to be so high is because they're actually utilizing direct train or mining to train, which is, fairly common on large bases that have reached a high mining productivity. Uh, and this is good for several reasons. It's very good for UPS and performance because there's no bots involved, no belts involved, no inserters involved. Like this is basically as simple as you can get in terms of like performance and things happening. It's miners, which you need anyway, trains, which you need anyway, if you're doing trains, and then there's nothing in between that it just goes directly in. Um, and due to the high mining productivity, you know, these can just, they mine so much so fast that they can just fill the trains. Um, you don't need a buffer in between that. Uh, and they're using speed modules, makes sense. Again, absolutely no reason to be using productivity modules here when you have such high uh, or, or patches in addition to the crazy mining prod research. Um, so this is, uh, you know, the direct uh, miner into train is used throughout the map. We're not going to really mention that past this point um but it's used there so just to look at it one more time it's uh it's two miners per uh per wagon uh interesting that they opted to go with two miners only and not like miners on the other side too i've seen both uh, not that one is wrong or right just an observation that i've uh, definitely actually probably more often than not seen uh when people use direct miner to train seen uh, having the miners on both sides of the wagon just to kind of speed it up a bit. But again, I don't know that that's really necessary here. Just do the sheer uh, level of mining productivity that they have. Um, so stackers coming in. They are using one, uh, four trains, it looks like. We've seen this on several bases, actually, I've looked at fairly recently uh, in, in the past as well. Uh, it seems fairly common. These work well. They're fast, uh, you know. They, uh, they're pull through trains, obviously, since there's no locomotive on the back. Uh, this seems to work pretty well for a lot of people. And I mean, these are speedy. These are real quick. I don't know the stats of these in comparison to uh, like using nuclear fuel. I would uh, wager based on the speed of this, that they're a bit faster than using nuclear fuel. Um, th these look like they're moving <laughs> at a pretty brisk, brisk pace, um, more so than nuclear fuel trains. I'm not exactly sure on this. I can't even click on it. Because uh, it's going so fast and my mass accuracy is poor. But um, if I could click on this one. Yeah, I can't click on it when it's moving like that. Um, I mean, I suppose we could just click on the train menu and find one, right? Uh, let's see if we can find one that's moving. So, like this one. Not moving anymore. Um, but, yeah, I think they're faster. Uh, speaking of trains, there are over 400 trains on this map and over 1,600 stations. That's a ton of stations. That is a that's a lot of stations. Uh, very nice labeling here using the rich text, the icons as well, which is now much easier to do uh, when setting up stations. Uh, so we just have ore patches along here. Uh, I'm not really going to look too much more at those. Pretty straightforward. Uh, it looks like biters are just off uh, from my understanding. I don't see any sort of defenses. I don't see any remnants 
or indication of biters at all, which is fine. You know, this space is definitely meant to be a, a building experience, not a fighting bugs experience. So that makes sense to me. Uh, nice intersections. Uh, visually, we've seen these type of things before. Again, keeping in mind that not everything here is necessarily the most efficient. Uh, not saying these intersections don't work. They certainly do, but, um, you know, anything in this base you see or that I mentioned is, like, not efficient. Um, that was not the main intention of this base. It was to make it unique and visually pleasing, uh, which it certainly is. <laughs> so let's just start with the smelting. Uh, we have copper kind of taking up this section, uh, multiple cells. There's a ton of these production cells in this map. Uh, and they mentioned in the note, in the notes, how many they have, I believe. Um, also, a ton of time was spent on electric networks. Uh, this is actually ridiculous. So <laughs> far more patience than I have, uh, because some of this was certainly built before the recent change of the bot's uh, placing power poles and, and wires connecting how they are actually built in a blueprint because um, this base was started in 2019 uh, so crazy amount of time spent making these power poles nice but this is just I mean this is an actual power electric network view that I actually like looking at which is very very rare uh, it I mean it's perfect really there's nothing that I can see out of place and this is just crazy to me um, so we will turn that off though to look at the builds so we have copper uh kind of from this section here so in this like quarter of it basically well except here but or eighth of it rather um so yeah we have copper in this section and a little iron on the outskirts here so looking at these builds they're all going to be the same so we're only going to look at like one of each because they're all the same uh it's beaconed obviously it is moduled now again interesting that they've chosen to do speed modules rather than productivity uh, now, when you have this many resources, you don't have to use productivity. Uh, I could be wrong, so please don't uh, hold me to this. But I feel like productivity um, may actually result in a higher output like per minute than speed. I could be wrong. I don't remember. Um, part of me thinks it is, and the part of me is questioning that. Uh, so it's been a while since I did the actual calculation and read up on that. But... Um, this is an observation that they're using speed. Um, you know, maybe it was just to make the amount of furnaces they wanted to fit in here actually fit in here, and productivity would have thrown that off or something. Um, again, I, I don't think productivity is really needed for the resource saving aspect of things, uh, aside from maybe reducing the amount of trains used or train uh, traffic, just because it's not consuming resources as quickly for the same output but uh you can see so this is uh eight beacon because there's 10 effect sources two modules in here plus eight beacons uh, it appears they all are so very well done getting all these to be hit by 10 or by eight beacons in this sort of configuration um, i would personally have probably a difficult time doing that uh, myself but uh so they're in by the looks of it they're in uh like a little square little sets of four here it's kind of how i'm looking at it so there's these four furnaces, this little square, and then these, and then these, and then these. Again, everything is like symmetrical as far as I can tell, and just it's just very nice looking. It's it's by far one of the most pleasing bases I've ever seen uh, visually. So uh, this is belt based, obviously. Now there are robo ports here, and there are a quite a large amount of robots, uh, particularly construction robots, in this uh, network. And I imagine this probably is a network that spans the entire map. Uh, yes, so probably not super helpful for UPS. Again, efficiency was not the main goal here. Um, so very, pretty straightforward, really. I mean, we're just taking in copper, smelting it, and then belting it out here. Uh, it's using some side loading here to switch sides. Uh, very clever because, as we know, inserters output on the far side. So this would be on the far side if they didn't do this trick. So switching it here with this side loading to then make room on this lane, open this lane up for these guys to output. And we get a full belt uh, from this. So very good there. And then these are all coming together and uh, looks like it's going up here. It's a little hard for me to differentiate. So we, it looks like it's it's uh, kind of every other. So we have plate or plate or plate or et cetera, et cetera um, in here. 
Uh, by the looks of it, the stations are being told to turn on and off, probably based on uh, an amount here. Uh, again, I have no idea how this setup works with all these smarts, but that's uh, my that would be my guess, is it only turns on when it actually needs a train to come here, potentially. Um, so then this is a, a waiting station, it seems like, for the empty trains. Uh, so yeah, this is the depot. I would imagine all of the, or most of the sections have this. Um, now this does have a bit of a different train area. The builds themselves are the same. Uh, and this is the same in the fact it's it's every other. Um, but then this is using a very tight diagonal stacker, which I like. Uh, but it doesn't really have this additional stuff, which I don't know if these are just general depots then, because I, I certainly I don't think this needs all those, and then this one wouldn't. So these maybe are supplying multiple things, potentially. Uh, if we take a look... Dude, I can't click. Okay, okay. <laughs> so it looks like so we're going in, out, which I would imagine would be the drop-off, or... Yeah, and then the depot. Okay, interesting. So yeah, this is an ore train, so this is in. And then it's going to out. And then it's going to go to the depot. So this is out plate, but there's an out ore. Um, I'm going to actually, I, I want to watch this here. I, I want to see where this goes, because I find this very interesting. Uh, when this is done, where the out or is. Okay, so this is going to the depot, but then it would go out. Is this out? No, that's out plate. So it comes to the depot for two seconds of inactivity and copper ore to be equal to or more than one. Uh, and then it's going to go, so out, I guess, would just be the outpost, obviously. So I'm an idiot um <laughs> duh so yeah there's that's kind of how this train network works <clears throat> excuse me so that's the copper again basically all the same here in an octagon octagon builds within the octagon rail um some interesting rail going on here uh, not bad by any means just kind of an interesting type of junction but it, it looks very nice uh in uh it's you know it's kind of just mirrored here just the the amount of time and thought that's gone into this is pretty crazy to me uh now we have steel here, and steel looks like it's uh, taking or smelting it into plate and then doing a very short belt pass through here to turn it into steel. Uh, it looks to be on a one-to-one -one ratio. Again, not using productivity modules, which is interesting, uh, but it seems to be working for sure. Um, I think it's like a one-to-one -one ratio... I'm not sure. No, this would be like a one-to-one -one, because it's one-to-one -one normally just iron uh, plate to steel. And then when you speed it, it maintains the ratio. So maybe that's part of why they did this one in speed. Um, so very good here. Same type of train setup. Again, you know, comes in. There, there's a stacker here. It comes in. Uh, this is all the ore. And then there's only, it looks like there's only one steel load here, which makes sense. You know, it, it takes a lot of steel to fill a train. Uh, now, these trains are very small. These uh, actual finished goods trains, I'll call them, are just 1-2 length. So, smaller here, but again, that's 8,000 steel, which is no small amount. Uh, and then, so then this quadrant is steel down here. Uh, and as we move in, we get more, like, into more of the finished higher tech products. So, we're going to stick around the outside here, uh, continue looking. I'm going to look very briefly at the iron. I think it's probably identical to the copper except of course for being iron um so yeah and again this is like is this mirrored not quite um but yeah so this is uh i'm just checking this is the same as the copper but i of course so if we look we are producing right now or on average we are producing more iron than copper uh, so I suspect there maybe would be a little more iron smelting it looks like I mean it's kind of hard to tell honestly for me to just count how many things we have here uh, but it actually looks like there's less iron significantly less which is interesting 
Oh, we're making more iron because it's going to steel, duh. So, <laughs> we're just going to ta uh, take that into account. So, we've got the iron here. And uh, before we move on, I do want to mention, I was looking through the notes. So, there's... Uh, the base has a total of 712 cells, a cell being one of these. So <laughs> there is over 700, 712 of these production cells. Uh, and of those, 702 are used for production, and then 10 are basically just empty for storage or future expansion. Uh, it uses about 104 beacons per cell, with the exception of plastic, solar panels, accumulators, and space science. Um, so as we, we saw the amount of beacons used, but also something that maybe we couldn't really tell is there's a hundred and about 130,000 speed modules used in this base, which is nuts. And then about 40,000 productivity modules, all level threes, of course. Um, so that is a ton of modules. The cost for that alone is pretty astronomical. <clears throat> So I'm going to move over here. It looks like we have a uh, brick and rail made in the same area, as well as a furnace production uh, section thrown in there. Uh, we have uh, red circuits coming in here, brick coming in, so it's very convenient. It's made here. Not an accident, I'd imagine. Uh, tons of steel coming in here, which is dropped off via train since it's not made here. Uh, and then these are also eight beacons. It looks like eight beacon throughout all this, except maybe the plastic or something is different we'll take a look at that uh, and then it comes through here these belts kind of just snake around uh, the you know to get to everywhere they need to go so very very clever creative design here of these builds uh, and then these are outputting the furnaces and i'd like to find the train stations so we have rail loading here three stations of it <laughs> three stations of rail loading uh here's our furnace loading uh, then we have our uh, iron unloading here, and then we have uh, red circuit unloading, steel unloading, and then tons and tons of stone, obviously for the stone brick, and then this is another steel unload, it looks like. So, uh, pretty uh, straightforward there. Uh, looking at the brick, it's going to be the same as the iron copper, it, you know, it's just brick. Uh, now, these are using productivity, which I find interesting. Again, it may just be for... Uh, like ratioing, like getting the right amount of furnaces in here for it to work how they wanted and like visually work and stuff. Because uh, I mean, this would be quite difficult. This is, in my mind, would be quite difficult to make all of this look basically the same. Uh, you'll notice that uh, for the most part, I mean, like this varies, like iron varies a little bit from brick, but generally, like the same design at first glance is uh, to me would be very hard to achieve. So, uh, then we come over, I want to look at plastic. So, yeah, plastic, uh, well, plastic is eight beacons as well because this only fits three beacons. So, uh, this has the petroleum, uh, looks like petroleum is definitely trained in. So, this whole build here is plastic and then half of this one is plastic. And then we have two and a half of rocket control units. So, this is our depot, again, where they wait using the train stop limit. <clears throat> Excuse me, and then this uh, another deep over there. Where's our actual unloading? Here we go. So coal's unloaded, plastic is loaded, a ton of plastic, and then the petroleum is that's a lot of pumps. Um, <laughs> the petroleum is over here. So the petroleum is on these vertical stations. It's a little hard to tell because it's nighttime, and also uh, there's just a lot of stuff. There's a ton of pumps and stuff going on here, but that's understandable just to get liquids to move how you want. It's quite difficult sometimes, so, you know, a lot of times a solution or a kind of best solution we have is tons of pumps. So, petroleum comes in. This is, what, one, one fourth of the wagons as well, or the tankers. Uh, tankers do now basically weigh the same amount as wagons. There was a time at, when they weighed more, so these would have been quite slow, but they weigh the same as wagons now, so that totally works, built the same size. Uh, and then we have rocket control units over here, which are sharing a belt of blue circuits and uh, speed modules. And then outputting, of course, the rocket control units. These are uh, pretty simple as far as rocket parts go. Uh, very simple drop-offs and pickups as well. They only need two ingredients. So uh, blue circuits and speed modules. I'm sure we'll find the speed module build here soon in the circuit builds. 
Uh, speaking of circuits, here's let's start with the green circuits. So coming over here, uh, the green circuits are very, very busy. Again, a beacon. Uh, this one is using three productivity and a speed. Uh, and then this is using two productivity and two speed. So uh, this definitely must be some sort of ratio thing to get them how they want. Because, uh, huh. I'm curious because this looks this to, looks to be a one to one. Like they have one cable machine supplying one circuit machine. But if you just did full productivity, as I've mentioned in my uh, recent Megabase tutorial videos uh, and other videos, if you do full productivity on both, it's very very close to a one to one ratio. So I'm not sure if this was done to make like the amount of machines needed total in here fit the amount that they wanted uh, because there's two, four, six, eight, and then, so there's 16 in here. Maybe if they had done full prod, even though it's a one-to-one, -one, maybe they would have only needed like 14 total machines or something, like 14, uh, like seven sets. I'm not, I'm not really sure. This is just very interesting to me. I'm not sure the, uh, the, the intention here, maybe this is closer to one-to-one, -one, like even more perfect, like closer, um, which was more satisfactory. So I'm interested. Again, I know this, pay, you know, I'm, I'm just, th these are questions that I didn't specifically see mentioned in the notes. So I just find this interesting when comparing bases and bases to my play style as well, uh, the reasons for this. So these are sent out. Uh, these don't look to be full belts out of each section. Uh, however, there's a ton of these. I, I I can't even count. I don't even know how many are in here. <laughs> a lot. Because uh, they're kind of all weaving in and out. Uh, this looks like there's two iron in the middle here. So this loads we have. It looks By the looks of it, we have copper and iron unloading here. We have a green circuit load here. And then three green circuit loads just smack in the middle there. And that seems to be the same for this one as well. <clears throat> And then another one up here, another one over here. Red circuits are pretty simple, actually, in comparison. We just have copper, green circuits, and plastic trained in, of course. The red circuit load. Again, the finished product train is a 1-2, opposed to the 1-4s. And this is a belt and cable here, which is fine. Uh, doing three pros and one speed on each of these. And then... Sharing circuits and plastic on this belt. And this is so uh, one of these is supplying uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these, I think. Or eight. No, seven. Because there's three and then four. So one to seven on this. Um, it works pretty well. Just have two copper at the top, seven this side, seven this side total of 14 red circuit machines and we have a ton of these cells obviously uh kind of this whole section here uh, now we're gonna hop a little bit to the left here and look at the blue circuits there's actually not that many cells of blue circuits at least not in this area um so we have again three prods and a speed uh inputting the red circuits and green circuits here and then again all these are a beacons uh Sulfuric acid, I'd imagine, is being trained in. Yep. So we have iron, copper delivery, green circuit delivery, three stations of it, with make sense, which makes sense. The uh, blue circuits obviously take a ton of uh, a ton of green circuits, and then red circuit delivery. So I'm interested how many machines a belt of green circuits is supplying. It looks like uh, so. There's one. So one, two. Three, four. It's actually pretty good. This one, this one is not quite running full. You'll see it's it uh, swaps there between item ingredient shortage and working. So the last one not fully working. The rest of these, I believe, are. Uh, and this is of course outputting these and then sending it back over this way. Uh, over to the left here, we have batteries. While we're in this section, we didn't really look at those. There's only uh five cells of those i think or four no, that's five um so these are actually halted due to a sulfuric acid shortage at the moment 
And this is very straightforward. Again, batteries just require iron copper. Good to go. Doing some side loading here. Um, and this comes over. And uh, this is loaded on this vertical station right here. I mean, it's still a ton of batteries. This is a, a massive amount of batteries. <laughs> and the iron copper here was actually for the batteries, obviously, instead of the blue circuits. Makes sense. Uh, so there's all that. Uh, we already looked at plastic, green circuits, blue circuits, red circuits. Uh, some more plastic thrown in here. Uh, a whole section for storage chests. So... <laughs> Uh, yeah, each would like they said they use some of these for storage. So there's a ton of stuff in storage. Um, now keep in mind that this network spans this whole map. So, you know, this 1.2 million circuits in storage, it's counting the, uh, circuits in like passive provider chests. If there are any anywhere like within built, I don't know if these were at any point. Are these in passive providers when they're loaded? No, they're not actually. So, uh, this is in fact, then that there's just 1.2 million circuits and, 742,000 iron chests. It's a lot in here. <laughs> and a casual 133,000 beacons just chilling in the storage. So they're ready for anything, basically. They're ready to just build a whole new base of this size. Just double it. <laughs> just double the whole base. Um, now we have sulfur, uh, sulfuric acid production here. So sulfur is made locally. Uh, petroleum trained in. Uh, sulfur made right here. And then output. And where are these outputting exactly? So this comes over this way, which comes over to here and is loaded up. It's cranking out. So this guy's just waiting to go to where it needs to go and off it goes. Uh, and then lube red engines or electric engines here. This is, well, it says lube. It's not actually lube, but oh, well, lube's down here. So lube, uh, this seems very similar to the uh, red circuit build kind of in the fact that it's just um, you know like two lube machines and then uh, it looks and it's actually exactly like the <laughs> it's actually exactly like the red circuit build um, so lube here where the wire was basically in the red circuit build and then eight or sorry seven machines here doing the electric engines so I, I like how the same build uh, design is used for different stuff it, it works very nicely and then solid fuel over here on the right uh, you know, very straightforward there. Light oil, and that's it. <laughs> Making solid fuel, which is went uh, sent over and loaded in the middle here. And then uh, it's going to be sent somewhere for rock fuel. I believe that was maybe over on this left side. So here's the oil production. I want it to look at this for sure. So we have eight refineries, all productivity. And then we have uh, a cracking here, a heavy to light cracker right here. And then the light to petroleum cracking right here. So this looks to be all the the main refining and the cracking is here. And then obviously the, liquid, the, the main liquid outputs are just sent over here. Uh, crude oil delivery. And then petroleum loaded up in here. Uh, now, and then we have, of course, some light oil here. That's what I was looking for. Light oil, heavy oil right there. Uh, I assume the cracking is built such that there is, of course, leftover light and heavy, obviously, to be loaded and sent where it needs to go. And there's several of these builds. There's three of these by the looks of it. So quite a lot of oil production. Uh, and then we have coming down here by the steel, uh, we have the low density structures, which are, again, pretty straightforward. There's a lot of these because they're very slow. We need a lot of them. So full productivity on these, that's good to see, because these are super expensive, especially on the copper side. <laughs> Very good to see utilizing productivity modules on these. Uh, co or copper on its own belt, and then steel and plastic sharing a belt here. Very nice. And this is outputting and loading into a train right here. It looks like just one train, which is more than sufficient, I would say, for loading two structures. That's a very expensive train. Um, so yeah, there's four, three of these? Yeah, three. So, Steel, we already looked at that. So, moving inwards now to the science. Uh, well, almost. We have... Where the heck was the rocket fuel? Uh, here's some. Here's the rocket fuel. So, rocket fuel here is actually stalled. Or, 
turn off. It has no uh, light oil, interestingly. So the light oil tanks were full. I'm not sure if maybe there's some sort of train shortage or backup with that or just distance. Again, not meant to be perfectly efficient, which is fine. Uh, some empty cells here, actually, ready for expansion. So, so if you were interested, this is kind of what it, the empty cells look like. So they're all just pre-built. Uh, you know, they all have like the same exact beacon layout. It's kind of hard to tell with all the machines and stuff in them. But this is what an empty one looks like or empty from production buildings. Uh, so they're all just kind of stamps of this is how it started. Just tons of these were put down. And Lily put a ton of these down and then filled them in as needed. Uh, so there's that. And then solar over here. Tons of solar. And robo frames. Which come over. Are the robo frames trained? Um, yes. A one, two train of robot frames. <laughs> then a whole train of solar panels. Uh, and then if we look, so the science builds, the last thing is, well, first off, we have a nice uh, section of three for the labs. We have one, two, and three. Again, all the same. Just kind of right smack in the middle there, going across in a line. Uh, these are put to be modeled. Very nice. And uh, these are stopped due to production science, uh, purple science, which I believe was mentioned in the notes as being something that's lacking. Uh, the trains also are color-coded, uh, by the way. If, if, we hadn't, if you hadn't noticed that before, all the trains are color-coded to match what they're doing. It's fantastic. That's a ton of work. Um, and then, yeah, so purple science seems to be lacking. I'll be interested to look at the build. So we'll start at red, uh, you know, obviously simplest, gears, copper, not much to really look at here. Eight beacon again. Uh, very good build. Uh, one gear machine per. For, uh, looks like, five here. So, ten of these. So, they have one red or one red science cell here. Uh, moving upwards, we have green science. So, it kind of goes counterclockwise, it looks like, in terms of uh, progression of science. Uh, gears here to go into the belts, and then inserters are made up here. So it looks like one belt machine, one inserter machine for uh, three, six, three, four, seven, like 14 of these, I think. Yeah, for 14 uh, green circuit, or circuit green uh, science machines. Uh, and then blue science so there's two things of blue science and uh, that's because blue science takes a long time and only produces two so blue science takes longer than purple or utility science and it only produces two whereas these produce three so that's why there's two cells of blue science uh, and then engines red circuits sulfur these are all backed up again because there's a shortage of per production purple science uh, and these have everything trained in. So none of this is made locally. And then we have, again, so two main sections, two big octagons of this. It would be 16 small octagons. And then purple. I want to see what's holding up purple. I'm curious. Rails, I would assume, very unsurprising. <laughs> Rails are a pain in the butt to supply for purple science, especially at large scales. Uh, I absolutely sympathize with this. I totally see how this would be a problem. Supplying enough rails for purple science is not easy, to say the least. Um, now, these are actually full, a lot of these chests. So, there's some gaps in these belts due to how the inserters are opening, but also just because the outside chests are actually empty. Um, because they, they've just run out due to how the things output. So maybe some change of how you're unloading could remedy this. Because the, the rails are here. There's enough in here. Uh, and it's more a matter of just the outside chests are getting emptied first. So then you only have like two or three inserters outputting. And then that's, of course, holding up the science. So, I, you know, that's always, that is difficult. I have that problem as well a lot of times. So... Can't really fault that. Uh, productivity on the science machines, on all of them, by the way, if you hadn't noticed. Thank goodness. 
and then uh, just one of those, and then one uh, uh, utility science here, yellow. I'm losing my words. So low densities here, and then frames and blue circuit sharing the cell. Coming down, it looks like, again, everything trained in. So there is a total of four, eight, 12, 16, 14 here, I think. <laughs> 14, yeah. So there's 14 in this one. Uh, however, I happen to just look at the one that's not full. Um, so there, <laughs> it's actually 16, which is what it should be. That's why I said 16 initially, because that's that's what like every other build has for the most part. So uh, some of these, yeah. So this one, 16, 16. This one is only half. Interesting. Um, and then same deal here. Again, you'll notice it's all the same. Like this is not this is not a bad thing. This is intentional, and this is what part of me, it, it, this is what makes this great. Is you know there's 14 here, and then purple science. There's also 14 in this exact same cell, and then these two, which have 16, match the 16 here. It's just so nice, symmetrical. It, just the amount of work and thought that went into this is just crazy to me. It's mind blowing. Uh, everything trained in as well here as we saw. And then, of course, this is uh, put on the trains and sent to the labs and sent into science. And, you know, we finished the 113 productivity and we're going to be about 40% to the end of this video into another 292,000 research. So, despite the shortages, this base is still just cranking out the resources, the products, the science. It, it just It's going. <laughs> uh, now, this one is full on production science. So it looks like only a few of them aren't able to get it. Uh, the last thing to look at here is space science, excuse me, which is down here, right by the red science. Uh, there is more storage and then gears, pipes, uh, radar, which just a ton of radar there for satellites, and then accumulators. So this of course has all the parts that we looked at previously trained in. Uh, there are, each one of these has a silo, just double checking. Um, so there's eight silos. Now, the base was, the uh, you know, a lot of the base is set up to do 4,000 science per minute. However, there's eight silos. So the reason for this, my guess, is purely for aesthetics and symmetry and evenness and making it all the same. And I can absolutely respect that. And I, I like that. I, I get a little chuckle from it because I, I, you know, Factorio is a game where, you know, I think it's actually in the spirit of Factorio to overbuild um well, period, but then even just for uh, reasons that really don't have anything to do with production, uh, really you would only need, I think, about five silos. But, you know, of course that would be a bit weird because you'd have these or something and then one of these, and that just wouldn't do for this type of base. So they built eight, and that's great. Like, I absolutely am a fan of that. I really like that. Uh, and if they ever want to scale up, well, they have the silos to do so. Um, so, you know, this is here. The satellites are made here now. Game, the devs got rid of the thing to view how many satellites and rockets you've launched. Don't know why. I'm gonna always complain about that, but uh, we can kind of see if we look at. I think consumption's the best marker. If we look at production, like there could just be a bunch of satellites sitting somewhere. I think production's gonna be our best bet. Consumption for the uh, satellites, so uh, sixteen thousand. So I would say about sixteen thousand rockets launched, at least with satellites. Um, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of rockets. 16,000 rockets. So, uh, that's what we're looking at here. Looking like, um, these are out of whatever is supposed to be on here. What, what is it on there? I always forget what satellites take. Where are the satellites? Um, so these are low on blue circuits? Nope. I don't think they're uh, accumulators, maybe. Yeah, it looks like accumulators is what they're long. Um, but yeah, there we go. I think that's mostly the base, guys. This has been a pretty long video. Uh, I'm kind of losing my voice and my words, as you can tell. Uh, my, my throat is getting kind of uh, it, it's scratchy. It's, I'm losing my voice. But this is truly an amazing base. It's been an absolute pleasure to look at. 
Um, I try my best to look at everything, and uh, this is just, this is really, really awesome. I mean, I, I can just sit here. This is like a screensaver. I mean, I could just sit here and just look at this. <laughs> you know, I can't even see what's going on inside it. I can maybe see some trains, uh, but it just looks fantastic. I absolutely love this. Uh, Lily, you have done a absolutely brilliant job with this base and this map. Huge props to you. Far, far more patience and dedication than I have. Uh, a thousand hours in here. And honestly, based on the amount of time spent, like, like the perfection of this power network and all the builds, uh, normally I'd say, you know, a lot of that time was probably spent AFK. I mean, I'm sure some of it was. Basically, all mega bases have a fair bit of AFK time. I would imagine... A, more than most bases, this actually has a lot of the hours on play, like actual play time doing stuff. Now, I could be wrong, um, but that would be my guess, because there is a lot of actual work and in, in, in time and playing that went into this. So that's even more impressive. It looks just absolutely amazing. I, I truly, I, I don't know what else to say. I can't give it enough, um, enough praise. This is such an amazing base. Um, kind of reminds me of I believe it was, I want to say, was it Derpamu's base, I want to say? That was another very visually pleasing base that I gave big props to. This is um, in that similar vein, very much up there. One of the best looking cool bases I've ever seen. Uh, the, the mass amount of octagons in here is just really cool to me. All these intersections. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's going to do it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. Again, Lily, thank you so much for submitting this. Uh, apologies, it did take so long to get to it, but I'm really glad I did. And uh, we will move on to the next one in the next week or two here. I think I have two more in line. And if you guys have a base uh, you would like me to take a look at for either a tour, which is like this style, or an actual review, which I've done, I think, two of where I, uh, you know, am much, I, I give many more critiques and advice for bases. Um, if you have any of those types of things, let me know. Uh, Discord is the best way to contact me. My Discord is linked in basically all my videos. And uh, I believe that's going to do it for now, guys. Thank you so much. I would love to hear your thoughts down below. If you did enjoy, a like is appreciated so other people can find this as well. If you're new to the channel and unsubscribe, feel free to subscribe. Turn on notifications with the bell icon so you can uh, find out when new episodes and videos on my channel come out. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you all and do take care.